Well, this morning, as I said, we are talking about joy. So, would you consider yourself a joyful person? What are some of the things that bring you joy? The most important question is I'm going to put a picture up on the next slide, and you need to tell me who you identify with. Okay, you ready? So we identify with Eeyore. Life's just so hard. <laughs> oh, bother. What am I to do? Pretty good, huh? <laughs> My Tigger's not going to be so good. Are we more like Tigger? Boing, boing, boing. Excited. Joyful. Who do we identify with? We're all going to have different personalities, all right? Some of us are to be more upbeat and bubbly. That's not really me, all right? Uh, no one's ever accused me of being bubbly, all right? I've been that kind of that steady, maybe it's my monotone voice, but I've been kind of the, the steady person. But no matter what our personality, we can still be people of joy. We may express it differently, you know, like Tigger's bouncing all around. And sometimes our kids, you know, when we put too much sugar in them, that's how they, they are. We can be quiet and content and joyful without having to jump around. So who, who are we like? Are we joyful people. And this, this is a message, this is something I've been exploring for a number of weeks about joy. You know, just because for myself, you know, I, I'm a very, I guess, content person. I consider myself a fairly positive person. But do I have just that joy of the Lord that every day I'm excited because of what he's done for me. I'm excited about what he might use me for on that day. And I'd say, I'm not there yet. And so I've gone on a, a journey over the next few weeks, and it's still continuing. But how can I have the joy of the Lord? How can I be, you know, bouncing around like Tigger? You know, when, when you meet Tigger, you know he's happy. You know he's excited. There's something in him. You know, I don't want to be, uh, Eeyore, I'm just putting up with life. You know, that's not how I want to be. I want the joy of the Lord inside of me. I need to understand what that is. So this is a, a definition by um, John Piper. He said, this is what he defines Christian joy. A good feeling in the soul produced by the Holy Spirit as he causes us to see the beauty of Christ in the word and in the world. I might read that again just because it's there's several parts into this. A good feeling. So it's it is a feeling, right? You know, we can't necessarily just choose joy. We can choose to do things that might make us joyful or choose to think on things that help, but it is a feeling, right? And so it is a good feeling in our souls, deep inside of us, produced by the Holy Spirit. We, we know that the joy is one of the things listed as a fruit of God's Spirit. So it's produced by the Holy Spirit, as he causes us to see the beauty of Christ. So we're looking towards Christ, all that he has done. So in the word, so God's word, and in the world. And that's, that's his definition of Christian joy, and I think he's done a pretty good job of defining Christian joy. A good feeling. I want that good feeling in my soul produced by God's spirit as I look around to see the beauty of Christ, both in his word and the world, what he's done for me. That's Christian joy. So, what are the things that bring you joy? So, we talk a lot about joy. We talk a lot about happiness. There's a little bit of difference. There's nothing wrong with happiness, right? Happiness is good. I'm, I'm, it's great to laugh. It's great to be happy, enjoy things. There's nothing wrong with happiness. And there are many things that are temporary things that bring us happiness, right? Sometimes, you know, things like, uh, you know, Paula was very happy yesterday. We were very happy yesterday because 
Charlotte won a grand final. Abby won a grand final in netball yesterday. And so, I about the first grand final with four kids in 17 years we've gone through. So extra super happy. So there's nothing wrong with celebrating those sorts of things making us happy. There's positive things in that. Um, but eternal things with the help of God's spirit are what bring us true Christian joy. As I said, there's nothing wrong with happiness, but its pursuit can distract us from living for God. So if I get a new car, I'm very happy about that. It's exciting. That will wear off. And then what, what's next? I need to get something else. So if I'm pursuing happiness, then it is not going to allow me to focus on doing what God wants, doing his will, living the way for him. So it can distract us. Nothing wrong with being happy, enjoying the things of this world, but if that's what we're pursuing, pursuing happiness. But if we pursue pursue joy, true Christian joy, happiness, I believe, is a byproduct. Because if we're focused on him, we're positive, we're remembering the things he does, then, then happiness, happiness is just there. Happiness is with us. We, have anybody watched the movie, The, the Pursuit of Happiness? Yep. So it was a really good movie. So I'm not going to bash the movie for itself, but the whole theme of it was him trying to improve his life, provide better for his son. And do things that would, you know, bring happiness, his pursuit of happiness. And the issue, though, is with that pursuit, I mean, there was nothing, I mean, it's been a while since I watched the movie, but I don't remember anything about finding eternal happiness in Christ. It was about finding the temporary happinesses here on earth. And there's nothing, again, wrong with wanting to better yourself and seek things. But if that's our main pursuit, and we're going to miss what God has done for us. We all heard of what I guess was originally coined the American dream, or what we could call maybe the Western dream of you know, a nice house, good family, you know, two cars, good jobs. That that's what we would say is kind of that Western dream. I don't know about you, but I know lots of people with a house and two cars and you know, a nice super who aren't very happy, aren't very joyful. So while those things in themselves are not bad, if we are truly pursuing those things, we are missing out on what true joy is. Nehemiah 8.10 tells us, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who is not already, who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord. And it says, And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Anybody know that song? The joy of the Lord is your strength. It's, it's an older one. Um, and I'm probably not very well sung, so it may be hard to identify. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. Notice how the joy comes from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. We already talked about, uh, there was one more passage I didn't put on the screen. Nehemiah 12, 43 says, And they offered great sacrifices that day and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice. God had made them rejoice with great joy. The women and children also rejoiced, and the joy of Jerusalem was heard far away. This idea that God is involved in bringing joy to the people. And we, in Galatians 5, 22 through 23, we talked about joy a bit in a kid's message last year, I believe, when we talked about joy because we walked through it. Um, and it is a fruit of God's spirit. So when we have his spirit inside of us, we come to faith in Christ. We've asked him for forgiveness. We believe in him. We put our faith in him. He's washed us clean, and he sent his spirit inside us to be our guide, to, to walk with us. And, and there are things his spirit is doing in our lives, and one of those is helping us to find joy. 
It is a fruit of his of the spirit. And there are times, right? We're not just supposed to always be jumping around, but you know, there are times of sadness. You know, if, if you came to me and said, you know, Brad, I, I lost my job and my, my parents just passed away and I'm just just so sad. And I'm like, oh, it's okay, but let's be joyful. I wouldn't be a very good pastor, would I? You know, I, I need to bring that person in and say, oh, that's so, so sad. I need to, to, to feel with them. That's what I'm called to do as a pastor. That's what we're called to do as, as friends. So there are, is a time for sadness. There, there are three times listed in the Bible where Jesus cries or Jesus wept. Once is when he's coming into Jerusalem and he's looking at Jerusalem and he's, he has that moment of, of tears for the city. Knowing what he's going to be coming into soon, that they're going to reject him and arrest him and crucify him. Another time he cries was with his friends when Lazarus passed away. He went to Mary and Martha, came to him, and he they were weeping, and he wept with them. He didn't say, oh, don't be joyful. I've, I've come. I'm going to raise him from the dead. Don't worry. No, he was there with them. He, he wept with them. He had those emotions even knowing what he was going to do. So he had the time of weeping, time of sadness, but then joy came out. Because I guarantee that weeping and sadness would have changed when Lazarus walked out of that tomb. Right? There, there, there was probably a bit of a party, a bit of a joy. They were a bit exciting. So from weeping, they turned into rejoicing. So I'm not saying that we can't be sad. I'm not saying that we, we, we can't work through hurt and those sorts of things. And one of the things I do need to specify at the beginning here is when I'm talking about being joyful and having joy in our lives and overcoming some of the things that we're going to list here in a second, I just want to acknowledge that there are, are, are some people who deal with mental health issues and they, they deal with things that bring them down and depression. These are real, real things. And it's not just saying, I'll oh, be joyful, isn't the answer for someone who is dealing with those type of issues. And so please don't make me, or please don't feel like I'm just saying, I'll just be joyful to overcome all the sadnesses, all our struggles. But I think the things that we are going to list today will help us find the joy so what are some of the things that steal our joy, right? Worry, anxieties, when we are anxious, that steals our joy. Sadness, again, sadness can be in its place a good thing. All, well, a lot of these things aren't necessarily a bad thing, so obviously sin is bad. Um, but not all of them are necessarily bad. But they're things we have to to work through. So sadness, there's times for sadness. If something um, difficult has gone through, there's a time for sadness. If we lose someone we love, we, it's okay to be sad. Sin, sin steals our joy. Hurt. Anybody here ever been hurt? Someone said something, someone did something, or they're a person, whether there's an <coughs> employment, or whether it's circumstances, which is hurt, that steals our joy. Pain. It's, it's very hard to be in pain all the time, so whether it's physical pain, emotional pain, and yet that can suck our joy away. Busyness. That's a big one in our culture. We <laughs> fill our schedules full. And you retirees, those of you who are, I know there's some over here who are retired, I'm amazed at how busy many of the people who are retired are. So it's not just those of us with kids and jobs and those sorts of things. We can fill our lives with busyness, and that sucks joy around. Negativity. Anybody here ever been around someone who's very negative and you come away feeling very negative? That steals our joy and conflict. 
we're in conflict with, with each other's or with employment, those sorts of things, they, they suck the joy, they steal the joy out of our lives. But if you look at that list, some of the things we can't help, obviously the Bible tells us not to worry or be anxious, um, but conflict's gonna happen, hurt's gonna happen, pain is gonna happen. Unfortunately, we are sinful beings and at times sin creeps in. These are things we're gonna have to deal with. And so if we want to, to see joy, we need to find out how can we get from that place of worry and turn that around into being joyful. So what happens when we lose our joy or when our joy is stolen? Issues become bigger, right? So if I take my hand and I put it out right here, it doesn't seem too big, but the more I focus on it, the bigger it becomes to where if I go like this, I can't see you guys at all. And when we don't have joy, we issues can become bigger. I can become negative without joy. It's happening again. I look at my life. If only this would be better, but I can't do that. We just become negative. We can lose hope without joy. Hope is a powerful thing. Our hope should be in Christ. We can lose hope. And I just put life can be a drag. You know, sometimes we just feel like we're just trying to face life. Life can be a drag when we lose our joy. So how can we have joy in the midst of these things that are trying to steal our joy? How can we have joy when we may not feel real joyful? So we're going to look at some things that help us be joyful. Again, joy is a fruit of the Spirit, so it's God's Spirit. It is an emotion. It is a feeling, right? There are things, like I said at the beginning, there's things we can choose to think on, things that we can choose to do that will bring us joy. But it's very hard just to choose to be joy because it is a, a feeling, right? I can pretend to be all bubbly and stuff, but inside I may not be. So we, what are some things we can do to help us overcome the things that steal joy? First thing is being grateful. So about three months ago, I was listening to the radio and a guy named um, Bernie Diamond, if you've heard of, him, heard of him on the radio at all. So he, he does little, little talks on the radio, Christian radio. And he said that he read that if you, or the study showed that if you do a, um, a gratefulness journal, so if you get a journal and you start journaling everything you're grateful for, for two weeks, right? For two weeks, you do that. The positive effects on our positivity actually last for three months. The, the power of being grateful. And I don't know about you, but there are times where my problems seem to be creeping up. They can at times be overwhelming. If, if I stop and say, God, this issue does seem overwhelming, but look at all these things I have to be grateful for. What happens? My, that big issue becomes smaller. 1 Kings 8, 66, on the eighth day, he sent the people away, and they blessed the king and went to their homes, joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness the Lord had shown to David, his servant, and to Israel, his people. There their joys come because they're thinking about what God has done for them. They're that, that gratefulness for what he does for Israel, but he also does for us. So that's something I have done over the last little bit. I'm not the world's best journaler. Right? I grabbed out when I decided, okay, I'm going to do a gratefulness journal. I grabbed out my journal, and my last entry was five years ago. So I'm not the, the, the best journaler. Um, but writing down the things I was help uh, that I, that I was thankful for to God, thankful for my family, thankful for the church, thankful for all the things that God has done for me, it changes your perspective. It does start to make you feel, wow. Yes, I've got these big issues, and I'm not saying that they don't exist, 
You know, God says, come to me, all who are heavy laden. So I can come to him with, with these big issues. He's not just saying, well, forget those things, be joyful. He tells us to come to him. But by being grateful, by thinking of the things that God has done for me, it helps me to be joyful. So anybody ever driven through ruts on the road? Yes? If you've ever driven on a muddy, muddy road and you're driving in those ruts, it can be very hard to get out of the ruts, right? Because your tires want to stay in those ruts. And then you kind of have to turn and it kind of pops up out of the ruts and you can get out. And then once you pop back in, it wants to keep you back in those ruts. And that's how um, ruts can be. When we are think negative thoughts, our brain actually forms ruts of ne negativity in our brains, right? So that way, when something else happens, another issue comes up, our brain wants to go right in those ruts, be negative, and it takes time, maybe two weeks of writing a, a, a thankfulness journal for us to pop our brains out of those ruts that want to go towards negativity, so things that suck the joy away. And so we have to do things, being grateful is a way that we pop our tires out of those ruts, and we actually make new ruts, new ruts of positivity. So then when a difficult thing I face, I say, you know what? I faced difficult things in the past. God has helped me. I know I can get through it. Isn't that a different attitude that, oh, again, I can't believe this has happened again. We need to pop ourselves out of those negative ruts or that negativity will steal our joy. A second thing that helps us to be joyful is that we should pray and ask for joy. I'm just not very joyful. Well, did you ask God? Romans 15, 13 is Paul speaking. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Paul is praying this over the, the church in Rome. This is a, what he wants for them. He's asking God to fill them with joy. We can pray, God, fill me with your joy. And I love how when we have joy, we have peace and believing in him. And what does it do? It gives us hope. And we abound in hope because of these things. Third thing, spend time with God. And I'm going to read this statement twice because I think that this could be one of the more profound statements that, from this sermon, and it might step on a few toes. A lack of joy many times comes from a lack of drawing close to Christ and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us. So I'm going to read that again. A lack of joy many times comes from a lack of drawing close to Christ and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us. When we're not drawing close to Christ, when we're not with him in his word, we're not with him in prayer, we're not allowing his spirit to work in us, why would we be joyful? We live in a very difficult, hard, sinful world where Left and right, we read on the news of all these horrible things happening. Happening, we have horrible things happen to ourselves. We we struggle with just the everyday of life. Why would we be joyful? And when we spend time with the Lord, we draw close to Him, and we we get that perspective. We get the the reason for why I'm here. That what we start recognizing all the things that God has done for us, his spirit works inside of us. We're drawing close to Christ. Our eyes are on him. And when we do that, I believe joy comes. There are seasons. There are struggles that we have. I'm not just saying, oh, just you know, read your Bible every day and you're going to be joyful. It's not necessarily that simple. But if 
if I'm struggling to where I would say, I don't really feel joyful, then I would say, well, look at your life. Are you spending time with God? Are you drawing close to him? Are you asking his spirit to change you and shape you and make you to be like him? And I would say in my own life, the times that I would say I really wasn't very joyful at that time, sometimes it's circumstances, and circumstances play a big role in it, but a lot of times it's just because I'm not doing those simple things of just drawing close to Christ. Psalm 16, 11, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So where is there a fullness of joy? In God's presence. Seeking him, being close to him, there is joy in his presence. Worship. Worship's another way that helps us to be joyful. You know, we sang songs of worship today. Put worship music on at home. Focusing our, our minds and thoughts on the Lord can bring us joy. We sang some beautiful, a beautiful hymn. We sang some beautiful songs this morning that talk about joy. There are many others that help us to know who he is. Read through the Psalms. The Psalms are full of talking about God's joy. Psalm 47, 1, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. Psalm 511, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may exalt in you. This singing for joy, when we begin to praise God, I believe his, his spirit of joy comes into us. Just two more things. They kind of go together. I think part of it, we need to change our perspective. So here I am preaching this morning, right? So if I said, you know what? Church is paying me. I need to prepare a message. I got to write something down and come and do it. Okay. So I go, okay, I've done it. Uh, I'm getting paid this morning. I have food for my family next week. Is that a good perspective on preaching? No. But if I think, man, God has called me to share his word here in Blaney to people to help us grow together, to help us to learn. And so I, I spend time, God, God, help me with that. Isn't that a better perspective on preaching? What are the things in our lives? What if, what, oh, man, my kids, they're just, oh, they just need something from me all the time. I just can't get a break, right? What if, what if I change that perspective of, man, God has blessed me with these lives to grow up, to help them know you, God. And I'm going to take this opportunity to build a relationship, to help them grow in that. I'm not saying don't get a break and get away, but if we change our perspective of what's going on in our lives and what we're doing, that's going to help us be more joyful. Instead of life being a drag, well, there's purpose. There's purpose behind what I'm doing. Um, final point here, focus on what God has done and does for us. No matter what's going on in my life, I can fall back to, man, God, I know you love me. You died for me. I have an assurance of eternal life because I have a relationship with you. Because of what Jesus did on that cross, taking my sin. No matter what in life is going on, and I can be sorrowful, I can be um, weeping because of life around me, which is not, again, what we said, not a bad thing, but still have joy in what God has done for me. But how much do I focus on God and what he's done for me? And how much do I focus on my problems and in this life? John 15, 11. So this is John. He's just it's at the end of his gospel. He's written all these things. He's told us about Jesus, what Jesus has done. 
These things I have spoken to you, your joy, sorry, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. So as we look at the teaching of Jesus, as we look at what he has done for us, and we understand that, as we read through those Gospels, what all he has done for us, And my joy should be full when I fully recognize what he has done for me. My joy may be complete because I I recognize who I am in Christ. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Thinking about him, joy in the Holy Spirit. We are joyful because of what he has done for us. And Philippians 4.4, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Notice it doesn't say, you know, rejoice because someone you love just died. No. That's, we can be sad for those things. We can be sad that someone we care for is hurting. We can be sad about maybe missed opportunities in our life. But when we rejoice, we rejoice in the Lord, what he has done for us. And that's always. There's never a time where he didn't die for me. There's never a time when I'm in a relationship with him where he's too busy for me. Always I can rejoice in the Lord. And... Paul, writing Philippians, wanted you to make sure you knew, because he said, again, I say rejoice. Not just rejoice, again, I say rejoice, because of what God has done. For me, it wasn't just a, okay, I'm going to be more joyful. It's been a process, and a journey I'm still on. I'm trying every single morning to wake up and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in him. And it is amazing, though, even in my stupor of just waking up, that if I have tried to focus on it, that is now becoming the first thought that comes to my mind in the morning. It didn't just happen first day. Sometimes, um, you know, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, oh, yes, I'm going to rejoice today, you know. what are the things we can do to receive that joy that is from God? He wants us to be joyful people, not just happy. As I said, though, when we are joyful, happiness is a byproduct. Let's be joyful because we're grateful to God. Be joyful. Ask him to give us that joy. Spend the time we need with God. The same way I said that if you're with a negative person for a little while and then you we feel negative afterwards, that's the same way when we spend time with the Lord, that's we're going to be pulled towards Him. The same way that negative person's pulling us down, that time with the Lord is going to lift us up, cool us up. Let's worship Him. When we worship on Sunday morning, but worship, throw it. You know, with YouTube and technology and CDs, I mean, you can throw a worship song on all the time. Let's change our perspective about our lives. Let's reshape those ruts. We're not looking at the negative, but into the positive. And let's focus on what God has done for us. So that way, when we read, rejoice in the Lord always. Like, yes, I can do that. Again, I say rejoice. Let's pray. Father, we are called to be a people of joy. Not because life is easy. Not because things might be just going perfect. But because of what you have done in us and for us. 
Lord, you saved me from the eternity of hell through grace. That is worth celebrating for. Lord, may the joy of my salvation be with me each day. May the joy of living for you fill my heart, my mind, my thoughts. And I pray that for each person here. Lord, you, you ask for joy to be on that Roman church. And I ask for joy to be on the people of Blaney Community Baptist Church. May we be people of joy because of what you've done for us. Lord, I, I know there's probably some people here who struggle with joy, just like me. Lord, change us. Help us to draw close to you so we might be made more like you. Lord, I pray for those who might struggle with joy because of uh, maybe bigger things than just, just not thinking about it, Lord, who struggle with maybe chemical imbalances or, or mental health issues, Lord. Pray you work in their lives and help heal them, Lord, but maybe may they also get the help that they need in other ways as well. Rest this in Jesus' name. Amen.